there's a bit of a myth that you have to be born a certain way to be an artist, that only so many people can be artists, and if you don't have it, you just aren't ever going to make it. But really, being an artist is sometimes about certain habits of the mind, and you will find that if you cultivate these and you use some of these ideas, that they can actually help you in other parts of your life with problem solving. So let's kind of dive into three ways that artists think. First of all, artists do a lot of research. Um, many artists learn more about something by drawing it. They say they look more closely at it. And you can see here in these pages from Albert Durer's sketchbook that he was practicing drawing these hands before he actually picked up the paintbrush and painted the hands into a larger work of art. He did a lot of practice and a lot of research. Um, that was back in the day when they didn't have photography, so you'd have to actually go look at the horse or the hand and have it hold still and or draw it in order to learn how that thing looked. Another thing that artists do is they don't always use the first idea that comes through their head. Your first idea may not always be your best idea. Um, often, artists create countless sketches, plans, designs, and lists before they start making a work of art. A good example of this is the costume and hair designer for the movie Frozen, and specifically the character Elsa. Each character was assigned to a different artist, and you can see that they have gone through numerous drafts of how they want the crown and the hairdo to look. I don't even have all the pictures here posted because there were so many of them. But uh, eventually they were able to get all of their ideas down and to narrow it down to the Elsa that we know and love today. There's also this idea that artists go by themselves into a cave and work on their art and every once in a while they emerge and they give us something great. And Really, artists work best when they are in community and they are talking to other people about their ideas. One of the biggest examples of this is Pablo Picasso and George Brock. And we always hear about Pablo Picasso, but um, some people don't remember that both of the artists lived fairly close to each other and they had studios close by. If you're not familiar with what a studio is, it's really just an art room where you go and you focus on making all of your art and all your supplies are stored there. So they were in and out of each other's studio talking about their artwork and their ideas and if you look at the paintings from around that time that they were both making, they're very similar. They're not copying. They were actually saying, hey, I like what he's doing here. I'm going to try to incorporate that idea into my painting. So nothing happens in isolation. We don't do good work alone. It's great to uh, show your work to another person that you respect and have them tell you what might be working and what's not working. And then it's okay if they take little ideas from you, as long as they give you credit. And George Brock and Pablo Picasso definitely gave each other credit on this when they developed uh, cubism. So just a reminder that to think like an artist, there's three things we've identified. We've got research, we've got brainstorming, and we've got getting feedback. And hopefully you can start to incorporate these into all parts of your life. And you'll notice that you don't just have to be born as an artist. You can develop your mind into thinking like an artist.